So I'm going to use oils this week. Maybe I'll use acrylics next week because I haven't used acrylics for a while. But I've had these out, so I've got a few I've picked this, this photo because it's a nice tree sort of isolated on its own. Um, brought this little picture in just to show you sort of example of you know, how my trees often come out. I, I very much like sort of trees with other things. So sometimes they're you know, more suggestive rather than detailed portraits. That's uh, what I did last year, last year. Um, so I picked this, picked this photo and I thought to start with, I would just start out by just drawing a little bit. <coughs> I'm thinking perhaps just get a bit of an idea where the, the tree's going to go overall and the overall shape of the kind of canopy. So sometimes, uh, you know, if you just try, I think when I, I did the demo the other day, I actually just started with the trunk. But in some ways, it's quite good to get the shape, the overall shape right. Um, as well as getting them like that, it's also quite important to just get an interesting looking shape. Some shapes are a bit boring, so sometimes mm -hmm. you might want to exaggerate things a little bit. But I quite like that, that's quite nice. The fact that this bit's a little bit higher and this, this bit comes mm -hmm. down, that could be that bit. And then the trunk would be here. And I'm just using very thin down paint for this. Um, and then this will get absorbed into the board. And then just getting a rough idea where the, the main branches would be. So just using quite a worn down bristle brush. That gives me a lot of control and get all these nice kind of wiggly little lines in with that. So that was just that. I'd normally paint the background first, but I'm, not, I'm just going to focus. It's more of like a study rather than a whole painting. So it's quite nice to do something. And then from there, go a little bit bigger brush um, and just going to mix up a little quantity of paint. So the colours I've got are really just the basic primary colours. I haven't actually got any green out today. I'm just going to use the, the blues and yellows. So this is, I think, sort of like a cabinet of yellow light and some ultramarine blue. So that gets quite a nice, nice dark. Um, just put a little bit down here. Yeah, that's actually quite a dark green, so that probably work quite well for these areas here. If I wanted to get that any darker, I could add a little bit of um, burnt umber. Do a little bit of a mix there with that. Or even a um, little bit of red a bit of crimson or magenta. That gets a really nice blacky colour if I need that. But at the moment the green is all okay. Um, I'm not sure I've got enough mix, let's just mix a bit more. Uh, so I'm using it fairly neat, but just a tiny bit of medium, just to make <coughs> that blow. And just want to kind of block in areas of shadow. So it's wet paint, but you can kind of work into it. Um, this painting, you know, that, that was all painted in one session. So I, I effectively needed to paint wet paint into wet paint. So you have to be a bit careful you don't smudge the bits that um, are finished, but, and then a little bit dark shadow down here. And the same here. Just kind of scrubbing that in. <coughs> so that's the main area to dark. I think I'll perhaps get a little bit of tree trunk in there and I'll go back to that slightly smaller brush. Um, so I use this funky colour that I've mixed. It's, it's, it's really nice if you get a chance to kind of go out and paint outdoors. And um, I will organise a couple of trips later in the year. Because the, the problem with photos is everything gets very dark and very black in the shadows. It was a bright day, but the contrast almost gets a bit, a bit exaggerated. So I know from experience, you've seen a lot more colour in these areas. That could be a bit of a 
might be great fun. I'll just draw you side of it for the past. On the interior. And this all this pretty much sort of blends in with the colour there. And actually I have a slight smaller brush than space for the thinner branches and twigs. Yeah, that gives a nice That's a couple of it here. Um, and then next stage is like the mid tones. So I'm not going to use any white for this. I just want to mix some yellow in with the, in with the, in with the green mix I've got. Um, as I mentioned in the last session, our eyes are very sensitive to green, so it's very easy to just get that tube green out and go full pelt at it. Um, I prefer you know, slightly softer looking greens. So, although this is probably going to look a little bit too dark in a minute for these lighter areas, it, I know from experience I need to get a darker background, otherwise, you know, the lights won't show up. Um, I remember painting these blossom trees once, and I've got it far too light too early, and I've ended up cutting around all these blossoms with dark, dark shadows. So it's much easier to kind of get some. Some dark shin a little bit earlier. Um, in terms of brushes, I try and keep the, the brush marks lively. Um, I like paintings that look sort of fairly realistic, but they're kind of impressionistic. Um, so I like sort of lively brushwork. Um, you'll notice, I mean, I've seen a lot of people paint trees and try and do this kind of this sort of thing, or they'll get a, a brush and um, Perhaps do maybe a fan brush, and some people using fan brushes and do this sort of thing. But to me, it also looks a little bit um, looks a bit false, and you end up with this almost like a cloned mark that you're using for everything. So if you can vary your, your brush marks, and sometimes I perhaps use a brush, you know, a mark like this, where it's mixed with the same sound. You know, big, bigger marks, maybe just use the, the tip of the brush, get some little dots, and you can use it to kind of drag it, get these sort of drag marks. So there's a whole variety of brushwork you can use. So try and, um, as, you, as you're putting marks on, try and vary them, if you can vary. So that would be the mid tones, and then stage lighter. Um, still probably going to avoid using white in the mix yet, although I might be able to for the final. And we'll just wipe this brush a little bit more, uh, more yellow in the mix. And that. So, yeah, that's nice. so, picking up a little bit of the paint that's there, but that's okay because it's all green, it can all kind of mix in. And if I've ended up with too much paint, I can just scrape a bit off with the brush. And again, like that, just wipe a bit back and then just go in a little bit lighter. Yeah, into the highlights. And probably more a little bit more down here that could go in. This one too here. What you sometimes if this was against the sky, sometimes you have um, it's not a great one for an example of this, but say you've got quite a solid area of tree. Um, sometimes artists will <coughs> put little dots in for the sky, so that, that's something else you can do. I'll just demonstrate that. In this case, we're sort of seeing in the fields beyond, so it'd be like maybe a paler, sandy colour. But it could, if it was the sky, you could just uh, do a few kind of carefully placed dots and dashes, and that, that gives an impression of the sky showing through. That's something that you could do. And then the final bit would just be highlight. So I think at this point I would add a little bit of white to the mix and the green mix. And that's where you can just kind of get these little tiny bits of light just sort of bouncing off leaves. I'm slightly exaggerating what's what's here just to just to kind of convey the idea. But this will give you a nice Nice impression of the, the light bouncing off the tree and the highlights. 
Again, it's mixing in a little bit, but I'm not, not too worried about that. Now, and that's one of those things I quite like about the oils, the fact that the, you know, they're not all dry mark. I can leave a dry brush mark if I want to, or I can have a sort of blended top and mark. And then the final bit would be like these highlights on the trunk, which are really just like a very pale grey. It's probably not going to stand out here, but you could get a nice highlight. Again, I'll, I'll exaggerate that just to level white. So that's a nice bit to sort of try and look for, sort of lights and shadows on the tree trunk. Okay, yeah. Any, any questions? Yes. Have you ever had bits of branch back in? Because I know it's a bit clumpy when you do, but can you do that? Um, yeah, you could do. Yeah, sometimes, actually, what I sometimes could do is, um, yeah, to be honest, with trees, I sort of very much tune the throwing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I could maybe then put some branches over the top like that, which sometimes you see. So, I really just try and observe what's there and just kind of order my marks in that way. So yeah, you, you could well well put branches back in. It might 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 be. And sometimes the light catches a branch, and it's just sort of, you know there, there'll be lighter bits and darker bits. So just try and take your take your inspiration from what's there. I'm not saying literally copy what's there. And sometimes what I do look for with trees, sometimes it's a bit of a mess, and you need to just kind of sort it out a bit and get some nice kind of rhythms and movement through the light and the shadow. So rather than absolutely copy what's there, you, you might want to make some slight alterations, sort of emphasise slight movement and rhythms through the trees. Yep, okay, right. <laughs>